Okay. Hi. I'm Tom. This is David. Uh, we work for Red Hat. And uh, we're going to talk today about a new project called NetTools, which is a collection of libraries that implement network configuration discovery. Um, so our focus with this project is to create uh, a suite of uh, low-level libraries um, that uh, implement various standards for network configuration, such as DHCP and related things. So we are not uh, trying to do uh, uh, full uh, networking configuration solutions. So we're not going to uh, configure IP addresses and so on, but we want to discover the network configuration apply that should be applied to your machine. So this should be a, a low-level library that should be integrated into a bigger network configuration solution, such as Network Manager, Network D, um, and so on. Um, we don't really invent anything new here. These standards we are implementing are old, from the 80s or whatever, and, and we just want to have the lowest possible level abstraction above it uh, in C so that you can in, uh, um, work with them easily. Uh, so it's not about uh, making it uh, making any heuristics or any policy decisions at all. Just go as low level as No, that's fine. Problem with this? Should we do that? I don't know. Just, just, just go on with it. Okay. Um, go on. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so the, pro the protocols we are implementing are old, and the existing solutions for them uh, are uh, are also old. So we have. Um, uh, I'll take this. Thank you. Uh, I've got a fumble on this end. Quickly. I'm sorry. Use this one. Okay. I think I will just. Okay. Yeah. Just unplug the switch. It off. It's off. Yeah. So batteries don't get it. Okay. Let me start uh, <laughs> that sentence again. Uh, okay, so we are implementing old protocols, and the existing tools are typically were made a long time ago when the world was a very different place. We have stuff like DHCPCD, we are DH client, um, and so on. And these are typically um, black box solutions. So you have you tell uh, DHCPCD to do DHCP on a certain link, and it does everything for you. You start it, it runs, it configures your link, set up networking, and that's it. So you just have an on-off button, and that's all. You cannot interact with it in any other way. But, and that made sense back in the day, when you had a static machine where your, uh, I mean, where your network card existed at boot and it stayed the whole time, and you were just doing the standard thing. You wanted one IP address, and that's it. But uh, these days, uh, DHCP and other protocols are used in, firstly, more dynamic situations, where things are coming and going, and you have more than one device, and you want all sorts of different things, and you have also newer um, technologies that want to use the same protocols, such as Wi-Fi Direct, uh, IP over Bluetooth, and so on. So they're using the same protocols, but in slightly different ways. So it no, doesn't really work anymore to take the existing uh, black box solutions, where there are lots of assumptions built in on top of the protocols, and apply them in new settings. You ne really need to just work with the protocol itself so you can tweak it to whatever use case that you have. So what ends up, ended, up doing, ended up happening is that Lots of network configuration tools, uh, such as um, Conman, uh, Lucy, uh, Network Manage, uh, Network D, uh, and so on, they would bundle their own implementations as libraries inside of them of the different protocols. Um, and uh, because they needed more access to what was going on than some sort of black box would allow them. And we'd work on that as well, as well in uh, System D, part of Network D, we did uh, DHCP and, uh, and other protocols. Uh, and we got requests from people saying, wouldn't it be nice if you could pull out this stuff from, network, uh, from systemd or like at least expose the APIs from systemd so that other people could also be using the same protocols, uh, which basically is what this project is all about. It's about making a publicly reusable API for network configuration. Um, and though it's not as simple as simply taking the, net, the library that exists already in systemd and exposing it to the outside. I mean, I talked to, um, I mean, it suffers from the same thing as all of the black box solutions did, that it comes with all of the assumptions that we could make because we knew the setting it was being used. It was used in Network D, so whatever assumptions we were made because we knew how Network D works was in, inside the library. So we wanted to make some libraries that didn't have any assumptions on top of the basic protocols. So we are not just taking out the libraries that exist, but we are sort of reworking the APIs quite a lot and working, reworking also some of the, some of the code. Okay, 
Tip. Um, so as Tom already mentioned, um, so the And I want to uh, show this uh, with one example. Uh, we have a library called NACD, which is part of the NetTools project, and it implements IPv4 address conflict detection. You might not have heard of it. Um, the, um, the RFC that defines it, it is basically a technology to detect on a local network whether anybody else on the network uses the same address, uh, IP address as you do. Um, this is useful to debug uh, network uh, interfaces. Um, to see whether if something is going wrong on your network, maybe the problem is that other people use the same IP address. Um, and it was used in that way uh, for a long time, but um, there are several different, more modern use cases where NACD is also used, uh, where ACD in general is also used. And when we developed NACD, we had to keep all of these in mind. And it's not sufficient anymore to just have one uh, black box that works in one of these uh, situations, but we wanted to open it up. So we want to open up that black box and give you access to some more details of the protocol. Um, for instance, for NACD, um, it can be used in three common example scenarios. You might be on a network where you have a static IP address. You selected it, you want to use it, you got to uh, use it on the network. Of course, you want to make sure that nobody else uses the same IP address, um, because if they do, you have all kinds of different routing issues and packet loss and so on on your network, and you want to make sure that you at least detect that kind of situation. But of course, in an automatic way, you cannot react to it. You cannot say, okay, if that IP address is not there, pick another one, um, because you explicitly said you want a static IP address. So NACD needs to be suited for that use case. It needs to be able to deal with that. Um, but there's also a different scenario. You might run DHCP, which is probably the most common option, and you get a lease from the server. So you get assigned an IP address. If you detect um, that there's a conflict, you need to, like even the DHCP uh, RFC mandates, that you need to treat this as a hard conflict, um, and you should uh, decline the lease, reject the lease, and request a new one. So it's a completely different reaction you have to the um, conflict detection. Um, and the third use case is, for instance, uh, quite recent RFC, um, it's IPv4 link local uh, address configuration. It's a way um, which was uh, copied over from IPv6. It allows you to get an IP address on a local link, so on a local network, without configuring anything. Um, and it uses exactly this as the core technology because it just picks based on a heuristic, a random address, and uses conflict detection to see whether anybody else on the network uses that address as well. And if you do, it just picks the next one. So um, ACD is a quite crucial part of one of these protocols, and it's, just, it's expected that you get conflicts, um, at least on bigger networks. In other parts, it's really just used to um, have better diagnostics, um, for instance, if you have a static IP address. And we need to keep all of these uh, situations in mind when we de develop these libraries, and this is also why we make these libraries um, that can be deployed in all of these use cases. Uh, so one of our crucial rules is to open up the black boxes, to not say there's a black box, there's one button, use it. But we say, we, we explain how ACD works, we give you access to the API, you can use it as a black box, you can just say, yeah, run on this thing, tell me when there's a, a conflict. But you can also interact with it, you can react to the different events you get, and so on. Um. Moreover, we don't only want to uh, make sure that we w our APIs work in all of the different kind of use cases as the, the ones that David spoke about, uh, but we also make, want to make sure that you can integrate the, the library that we're writing in any sort of other software. We don't want to commit to some sort of specific library that you need to use, some sort of a, a, like a event loop or whatever else. So you should be able to, whether you're using um, Network manage Manager with Glib, or if you're using NetworkD with SD event. Uh, or anything else, the, we want the library to still work and to, or to integrate nicely. So basically, there should be no reason to use anything else. Basically, we are, that's one of our, one of our aim, aims. So um, the way that we are doing that naturally is that we are making things not depend on any external event loop, just using the kernel um, EPOL FT uh, API directly and making things as low level as possible so you can integrate it nicely wherever you want. Um, 
so far, uh, it's worth mentioning that the NACD library that uh, David spoke about has been integrated into um, Network Manager, and it will be part of the next release, as far as I know, if it's not already. And, um, and we are, of course, keeping in mind Network D, which is what we worked on before, so we want to integrate it there as well uh, in the future. Um, we have, uh, in the case of NACD, we have integrated it into our, also our own library. So this is just not using any external libraries, no, no event loop library anything like that. This is just um, a small wrapper on top of NACD. So IPv4 link local is, as, as David mentioned, is a way of just grabbing your, so picking for yourself an IP address without any external configuration at all. So this, and this relies crucially on NACD, and this is, or, or on ACD, sorry, and this is where ACD first originated. So the idea is basically you, the library in APU4 link local will grab an address at random, do ACD on it. If it turns out to be, bit, to be already in use, it tries another one until it finds one that works and it will give it to you. Uh, so this shows that we can integrate our, our own libraries easily uh, into each other. And lastly, uh, I guess that all of that is sort of expected and straightforward. But lastly, we also had one last use case in, in mind and that was the one nice thing we had about the old tools, the, the black boxes, we just fork off a binary to do whatever setup we wanted. Because you got some sort of an isolation. And when you're doing networking, that's typically uh, a good thing. You want to be able to have the, your network facing uh, binaries, uh, processes, uh, not uh, in the same address space as, as uh, everything else. Um, and if you're just using a library, you sort of lose that because now the library context will be part of Network Manager and if that's a, if it's an exploit in the DHCP library, suddenly you've exploited all the Network Manager or stuff like that. So in order to still get back the isolation that the black boxes allowed, uh, we keep in mind that we want all our APIs to be designed so that they could easily, naturally be exposed uh, over IPC. So we want to, like, in, at least in principle, uh, you should be able to just make a binary out of the API we have and, ex and expose exactly the same, sorry, make a binary out of the library we have and expose exactly the same API over Varlink or Dbus or, or any other sort of um, IPC protocol. And then you, on, the, on the remote side, the API should, look, should work basically the same whether you use it remotely uh, or in process. So that basically means that our APIs are designed to be asynchronous so that you can basically based on message passing, even if it's running in the, in the same process. So if we talk about um, that we try to have universal APIs, that we try to open up the black boxes, give direct access to the underneath part, so the question really becomes, what do we provide? Like, does that mean you have to understand all the underlying RFCs to make the use of that? And this is where our last part of this talk comes in. Um, the things we do provide is that we try to integrate all these RFC, RFCs with uh, Linux and how Linux works today. A lot of the protocols were implemented or developed yeah, in the 80s, in the 90s, and implemented back then. And there were completely different constraints and con uh, different assumptions that people placed. And they were right back in the time, but they might no, uh, no longer apply today. So we took this opportunity uh, when we rewrote most of the things or extracted them to look how these things apply today and whether there are new technologies we can use. And all of our libraries, uh, we made sure that they use Linux, uh, modern Linux kernel features at least, um, in, the most, uh, in the best possible way. Um, And I want to explain it uh, with one example, which is the uh, DHCP4 library, um, which is also part uh, of the NetTools project, um, which is probably the most common protocol uh, that we talk about today, the uh, dynamic host configuration protocol. Um, there was one, like, when we implemented it back in uh, System D, um, after it was implemented, we got a report from uh, somebody who deployed it on their production system, and he told us he got a 30% increase of overall network ex uh, uh, performance, and we were like surprised because, I mean, why does it matter um, how you configure your network that you get an overall performance increase on all packets sent over the network? And as it turned out, uh, the, um, of course, DHCP runs by, uh, the entire time during your, uh, while the network's up, because it needs to react when a lease expires, it needs to re, um, the release is revoked, and so on. And it turned out that if you use uh, kernel packet sockets, uh, even if you filter on them, the filters are actually quite slow 
um, compared to when you don't do that. Um, and what we made sure in our library without knowing that, uh, that this might even turn out as an issue is that we always use, for instance, the appropriate or most high-level feature the kernel gives us. So we only use packet socket, which is a low-level kernel uh, interface to get all kind of packets when it's really required. Um, but as soon as CHCP gives us an IP, we try to use the UDP stack. And there, um, the kernel has quite sufficient uh, filtering mecha uh, mechanisms that this kind of problems don't apply. And this is one of the examples where we try to use, um, yeah, try to, to adapt these old protocols to how uh, Linux works today, and try to make use of features like eBPF today um, of the specific uh, sockets that were created for specific protocols in the kernel. And we spent quite a lot of time just reading how the kernel actually does specific things, so to make sure we don't have race conditions there, and so on. This makes us specific to Linux. This means we can't, can no longer run on other systems, but at the same time, this gives us really like a lot of benefits um, and makes it a lot easier to use these things. Um, so to summarize and to maybe give a future outlook, the Netus project, uh, it doesn't invent any new protocols. It's like DHCP is not a revolution. And I mean, uh, it existed before. What we try to do is uh, we ourselves had spent several times uh, being required to implement DHCP in different use cases because different use cases popped up. And we were always uh, annoyed by the fact that it's so hard to adapt these uh, protocols or these implementations to new use cases. So we, what we try with uh, uh, Natures is to provide um, to be as close as possible to the RFC and not place any assumptions ourselves so we don't want to restrict the user. At the same time, of course, that means it is a bit more difficult to use um, because you need to, like, it's not just a button you press, but at the same time, you can use it in so many use cases. And there are so many new situations where, for instance, DHCP these days pops up. We have a dynamic Bluetooth, uh, IP over Bluetooth, um, where at any point in time, a new interface might pop up on your system and you need to configure DHCP. There is the Wi-Fi peer-to-peer -peer specification, which allows you uh, to create one-to-one -one connections between devices, but requires DHCP to configure that. So you need to dynamically create a DHCP server and DHCP client just for one interaction. Um, and we have all these use cases in mind when we try to uh, create these libraries, or we try to have all these use cases in mind. Um, and as a future outlook, there is um, a new specification written by the um, IETF called the HomeNet specification. And what it does, it tries to summarize all the old protocols um, like DHCP, like ACD, um, also the related protocols for IPv6, and tries to define how a home net, and with home net they basically mean the network you have at a private home um, should look like, and how the protocols should interact, and what things to do, and which things might no longer be relevant today. And they also have some new configuration protocols in there, and we kind of want the NetOS project to go into that direction, eventually be a full, complete um, implementation of this specification. Um, the last time I looked, the specification was still a draft, but if anybody's interested, I really recommend looking at it. Um, yes, I think that's it uh, as an overview of NetOS. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Ciao, hi. Uh, and the core implementation is in C or something? Yes. Um, we started this project as C and we continued, continued it so far because most of our uh, users uh, are C users. Uh, in particular, we work with the network manager people to try to make sure they can use it at least. Um, and we never place any assumption that, uh, that wouldn't work with them. Um, we didn't have any plans so far to change this. Um, yeah, and one of the problems is like a lot of the things we do are really uh, low-level kernel APIs so where we need to interact, and the easiest way to do that is so far C. Might no longer true for a long time, but yeah, so far we still make this all available as C libraries. And do you do you see it kind of spreading with other bindings, or is is kind of the goal to keep it? Uh, what we experience uh, uh, experimented uh, with ourselves is try to provide, um, as Tom described earlier. Um, uh, IPC APIs for the same libraries. And we have, for instance, uh, experimental Dbus wrappers that we try to adapt to make sure we can expose all these APIs uh, over Dbus. And you can like fork off your own process and use a private Dbus connection 
to talk to that process and get the same APIs. And of course, other bindings are then possible as well. Um, we have no stable guarantee so far for any of these experimental features, except for the C API. Thank you. So maybe a question for me, like, uh, can you show like where this project lives, like on GitHub or somewhere, so that interesting people can have a look? Can. Sorry. Ah, <laughs> good. I thought that was the last slide. Yes. It's on, it's, right now it's on GitHub uh, slash NetTools, and the different projects are uh, repositories there. There's also a mailing list called uh, NetTools Devil at Google Groups. Um, where we have announcements whenever a new release is out, and where we discuss and welcome everybody to ask questions there, uh, or yeah, ask us how it could be integrated with different projects. It's all in the readmes of the different projects as well. So thanks everyone. Give a round of applause to the two. Thanks a lot for the introduction.